doctor the doctor in the house? Yes? Okay. Because um, I can't even believe I'm standing on this stage. Because two years ago it was my dream to speak at a TED conference. And so I'm just waiting for, waiting for the alarm to go off and someone to throw water at me and something to say, you're dreaming, wake up. So if anyone has an orange or an apple, you feel free to throw it at me at any time so I know that I'm not dreaming that this is real. But today I'm going to talk to you about human trafficking and the role healthcare professionals play in the fight against human trafficking. So while we're getting our PowerPoint together, I want you to close your eyes. Everyone, close your eyes. And think about your children. Everyone, close your eyes. Think about your children. If you don't have children, think about your sister, your nephew, your daughter, your son. Think about a child you know, love, and care about. You want the best for this child. This child is precious to you. This child put a smile on your face. This child makes you have butterflies in your stomach. Now imagine someone taking away their innocence, forcing them into a life where they are physically and psychologically abused. They're beaten severely. They are raped. Sodomized, and they are suffering from severe trauma. They are stripped of the name that you know them by. They are forced to work long hours with little or no pay. They are branded. And this child that you're thinking about, there's nothing you can do to help this child. You may open your eyes now. I know that was a little rough for some of you thinking about your own kids going through a situation like that. Sounds like slavery, right? You're stripped of your name, you're forced to work long hours, you're beaten, you're raped, and you're sodomized. Sound like slavery that we read about in our history books, right? But this slavery still exists in this the 21st century, you see. And we know it today as human trafficking. Any of us ever heard of the, the term human trafficking? Great, quite a few. Is there anyone that has never heard of human trafficking? Never heard, first time. Well, let, I, let me talk to you a little bit about what this human trafficking is. What this modern day enslavement that's happening not in Thailand, not only in Mexico, not only in China, but it's happening right here in the United States. Did you guys know that? Let me personalize it a little for you. Any Brooklynites? Anyone from Brooklyn? It's happening right here in Brooklyn. How do I know? I'll tell you in a few. But let's define this human trafficking. Okay. Our federal law is only a little over 10 years old. The Trafficking Victims Protection Act came about in 2000, okay? And they defined human trafficking as the recruitment, harboring, transportation, provision of a person for labor or services through force, fraud, or coercion. Those three words are key. Force, fraud, or coercion. And human trafficking can take the place of sex trafficking, labor trafficking, domestic servitude, child soldiers. But today, I'm going to focus specifically on sex trafficking. Now, what is sex trafficking? It's right here. It's a commercial sex act. A commercial sex act that kind of sounds kind of like a big word, kind of confusing to me when I first heard that definition, a commercial sex act. 
but it's a commercial sex act that's induced by those three words again, force, fraud, and coercion. If I fall, please do not take pictures and post them on Facebook, okay? So the definition, sex trafficking, is a commercial sex act that's induced by force, fraud, or coercion, or which by the person induced to perform such acts is under the age of 18. This issue that's plaguing our nation, this issue mostly affects our children. It's estimated that in the United States, 100,000 youth or children, or youth, because youth can kind of go over into the 21 bracket, are trafficked right here in the United States every year. And for some of us, we can't even begin to think of what 100,000 look like. So let me show you. That's a football stadium. So if that 100,000 number is a little too big for you, just imagine a football stadium filled with people. That's how many youth are trafficked within the United States each year. Shocking, right? Let me hit you with something else. Does anyone know what's the average age of entry into this sex trafficking thing that I'm talking about? This horrific crime? that's stripping us of our human dignity. Thirteen. Thirteen years old is the average age of entry into this lifestyle. Thirteen. And we, are, we as parents, we think, well, I, I teach my child the right thing. This cannot happen to my child. No one is exempt. Because race, it doesn't save you. Your social economic background, it doesn't save you. Your religion, it doesn't save you. Because all these people see that our interest in our children and our youth is dollar signs. And if you can make them money, hello, I'm going to choose you. How does this happen? Where does it happen? Our kids are being recruited on Facebook through social media. We don't teach our kids how to protect themselves online. We tell them, you're on Facebook, go to your room, I'm over here cooking, you're on the internet. But do we really sit down and teach our children how to be safe online? When was the last time we saw a Say No to Strangers commercial? In the 90s, it was everywhere. Don't talk to strangers. Haven't seen that in a while, huh? Our children are being recruited at the malls, from playgrounds. They don't trust with me too much, huh? So how do I know about this issue? Did that go too far? Okay. Oh, now I did it. Okay. How do I know about this issue? I know about this issue very well. Because you see, this is not something I watched on TV. This is not something I read in a book. This is not something I researched. This was my life. This was my life for 18 months. Remember the child that I told you to think about? and the things that I described that was happening to that child. Everything I described about that child happened to me. Everything I described about the child that you were thinking about happened to me. Sex trafficking. I was trafficked right here in Brooklyn, in Starrett City. So when I'm speaking about this issue, I'm speaking of my life. And I'm not going to sit here and, and, and tell you exactly how the beatings occurred, and how the rapes occurred, and how the trauma occurred, because our brains can already do that, okay? 
I'm just moving a little slow. So when I'm talking to healthcare professionals, I want to show you a picture that you can relate to. Everyone knows what it's like to be brain dead. And you see, I was brain dead. When someone's brain dead, they're hooked up to a machine, and the machine tells you when to, how to eat. The machine does things for you. I was brain dead for 18 months, and my machine was a pimp. He told me when to eat, when to sleep, when to work, how much money to make. He was my life support. So when you think about this issue, you gotta think about the psychological control that these traffickers have on our youth. Women and children, boys and girls, because boys are not exempt. I was brave then, and my pimp was my life support. So when we talk about eradicating this problem, it's a collaborative effort. Uh, this, this is a chart, and each section of this chart represents different members of our community. Prosecutors, lawyers, judges, law enforcement, health professionals, nonprofit, community members, and others. Okay? But when we look at this, each person on this chart has a role to play in eradicating this problem. Because we think to ourselves, oh, that's a big problem. It's the second largest growing crime. It's a $32 billion industry. How can I help to eradicate this issue? But I'm going to focus specifically on healthcare providers. I'm going to pull you out the pie. And I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to tell you how you can fix this problem. So one of the problems we see in our healthcare system is the lack of education, the lack of knowledge. We don't know about human trafficking. We're not trained on how to identify victims that we come across, right? That's one of the problems. Or we misidentify victims, okay? The guy comes in and he says, well, I'm her father and she was raped by someone and we're not thinking, well, the red flag says, that you're not really her father because you cannot give me history, right? We do not know the, resource, the resources in our community. Do we know of any programs right here in New York for victims of sex trafficking? There's GEMS. There's My Sister's Place. When I was in the life, I interacted with healthcare professionals quite a few times. The first time in the hospital, one of the girls that I was working with, the trafficker sliced her from her skull to her neck to her back with a box cutter just because she was smoking weed when she should be working. And when I went to the emergency room, they separated us. And they would not give me any information on this girl because I was sent with her to make sure she's not talking and telling them she has a pimp. Great emergency room workers. When I came out the life, I had to see seven psychologists. You know why? The first six didn't understand the trauma. Because when I would go to their office and they would say, well, Shamir, what do you want to talk about today? I said, well, what do you want to talk about today? You're the one with the PhD. You're the one that went to school. Because the psychological impact is so difficult. You have to process that trauma, and you process that trauma in several different ways. Right? So what's the solution? If you look at this picture, you see different people trying to push the solution together. Because it can't take one person. It's a group of us that have to come together and make this thing work. So what can you do? Educate yourself on this issue of human trafficking. Know that victims of trafficking do not self-identify. So if you come across, they're not going to say, hey, I'm a victim of trafficking. 
and be non judgmental when you come into, into contact with victims. Understand trauma and its effects. Is it the Stockholm Syndrome? Is it the post traumatic stress disorder? Or is it desnos? Which is new. This is a new form of trauma, disorder of extreme stress, not otherwise specified. It's coming out in the 2013 BSM um, book. Assess the situation. Is the person she's with, is the person that's accompanying her, seems controlling? Is that person answering too many questions? Are there signs of abuse? Okay, use a strength-based approach. Get training on human trafficking. I work for Shared Hope, and we have a, a, a intervene guide that you can buy, $25, and you can buy, and have, they have intake questions on how to identify victims. And there's a National Human Trafficking Hotline, 888-3737-888. If you see something, say something. Okay? This is a collaborative effort. We have to come together. We have to rise up. Stand up for the oppressed. Stand up for what's right. It's our moral obligation as human beings. Forget about the titles. Forget about if you're a lawyer, a doctor, whoever you are. Just remember, you're a human being. And this is who is being affected by this issue, human beings. So thank you, this is my time for today. I'm Shamir McKenzie, and I have um, a pamphlet downstairs with more details of my story. Uh, thank you so much, and thank you guys for having me today.